example, it's a small film making a huge splash and it comes out today. That press conference is scheduled to take place at 2 o'clock this afternoon at City Hall. So we're going to step outside here on the street, the highway, which is shut down, so you can see that, yes, this investigation is still going on. Well, if you had to drive on I-5 today, you likely had to deal with a lot more traffic than usual. Look at the bottom of my shoe. You see how the slush, hello, I don't have good balance out here because it is <laughs> slick. But there are reports the staff sergeant's wife and two young children have been moved from their home on the base as a precaution. So let's see if it works. Very well, apparently. So this is what you're dealing with. And trust me, folks, snow is bad enough. Ice is even worse. How many have you seen come down? Have, have you been able to chart any of that? You know, if I could count that quick, I'd have a good job as an auctioneer or something like that because they're coming down so fast. And by the way, the park has added a new zip line and slide this year. It's going to be open on weekends starting May 12th, and then it's going to open daily starting Memorial Day weekend. Well, I just got off the phone with a member of the Kitsap County Sheriff's Department, the agency investigating this deadly shooting, and they confirm they have found the suspect's vehicle not too far away from where the shooter was shot to death. As for the suspect himself, he is still on the loose, considered armed and dangerous at this time after shooting that state trooper right here along Highway 16 near Anderson Hill Road. Now, we're still waiting to get more information about the trooper, but investigators say he pulled a truck over just before 2 o'clock clock this morning, but when he failed to check in, dispatcher sent another officer over to check on him. That's when they found him shot. He was later pronounced dead at St. Joseph Hospital in Tacoma. Now, once that call came in, officers throughout the region started staking out the freeway from here in Kitsap County to Tacoma, and we were right in the middle of talking to the spokesman about why the suspect was pulled over in the first place when word about that suspect vehicle being located came in. I've learned in my years of law enforcement that there's no such thing as a routine traffic stop. Um, I don't know the reason that the, the trooper made the traffic stop. So I don't have any information on the reason for the traffic stop at this point. So you can see officers right there wasting no time to go check out reports of the suspect vehicle being located. Now, as we've confirmed with the Kitsap County Sheriff's Department, the suspect's vehicle is a 1999 dark green Ford F-350 pickup truck. Again, it has been found about two miles away from where we are, and it was found so quickly in large part because as we were driving down here from Seattle, we noticed several reader boards along the freeway that had the suspect vehicle description information on it. So again, officers have found the suspect vehicle, but the man believed to have shot the state trooper to death is still on the loose. So keep it here with Q13 Fox News this morning. This story is literally developing minute by minute. We'll have another live report for you coming up in just about 30 minutes. But for now, reporting live in Kitsap County near Gorst, Angela King, Q13 Fox News. Yeah. Prosecutors say they have the evidence to prove that Josh Powell killed his wife, Susan, and then tried to cover it up. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Angela King. Susan's family is reacting tonight. They are disappointed and sad that Powell was not arrested years ago because had he been locked up, they say his two little boys would still be alive today. John Hopperstad joins us now from the newsroom with more. Feels extreme. We also spoke tonight with Ed Troyer of the Pierce County Sheriff's Department, who also believes there was more than enough evidence to arrest Josh Powell. He says West Valley detectives did a great job gathering all of the evidence, but that for some reason, it never got to the point where prosecutors or police in Utah were ready to make an arrest. There's also new information about the search of Stephen Powell's home that happened last summer. Police say they have found photos of Susan Cox Powell in her underwear, apparently shot through a door without her knowledge. Also, pictures of Susan's face were pasted on the bodies of naked women. There was child porn on CDs as well. Stephen Powell now faces charges for voyeurism and possession of child porn. His trial is set to begin May 7th. A mother in Pierce County confesses to killing her own son. Police say she called 911 this morning and told the operator she had just killed her two Two year old boy Noah. Now, police rushed to the home on 36th and South Thompson in Tacoma. That's where they found 28 year old Alicia Walker and her son, who was near death. He eventually died. Neighbors can't believe he's gone, and police say this was no accident.
There's also new information tonight about the search of Stephen Powell's home that happened last summer. Police say they found photos of Susan Cox Powell in her underwear, apparently shot through a door without her knowledge. Also, pictures of Susan's face were pasted on the bodies of naked women. There was a child porn on the CDs as well. Stephen Powell is now facing charges for voyeurism and child porn. His trial is set to begin on May 7th. A mother in Pierce County confesses to killing her only son. Police say she called 911 this morning and told the operator she had just killed her two year old boy named Noah. Police rushed to the house on 36th and South Thompson in Tacoma. That's where they found 28 year old Alicia Walker and her son who was near death. He eventually died. Neighbors can't believe he's gone, and police say this was no accident. Well, is the U.S. military trying to hide information about the murder of innocent civilians in Afghanistan? Well, the lawyer for the man accused says the military is withholding evidence and won't give him access to any of the surviving witnesses. Throughout Afghanistan. An Australian reporter interviewed children and adults who say they saw the attacks. They say other soldiers were there, as many as 15 to 20 men holding lights during the killing spree. Well, in an attempt to reverse a pattern of what it calls violent tactics, the Department of Justice outlined a set of reforms for the Seattle Police Department. And just yesterday, Mayor Mike McGinn delivered his own proposal to improve the police department. Seattle cops have come under fire recently for a number of incidents involving excessive force. Well, a Mega Millions winner could still be out there. Is it you? Well, numbers for the $640 million jackpot came out just an hour ago. And if you're the one person who has not seen them yet, here they are. The numbers are 2, 4, 23, 38, 46. And the Mega Ball, it is number 23. Well, there's a man on the loose in Mason County who sexually assaulted a 14 year old girl. Take a look. He's in his late teens, or early 20s, heavy set with brown hair and brown eyes. He stands about five foot seven to five foot nine, and his name might be Brandon. Deputies say the 14 year old girl from Belfair was attacked on March 20th. It happened in a wooded area behind the tennis courts at Hawkins Middle School. Well, some stolen coins could help solve the murder of a highly decorated war hero. Patrick Fleming was killed last December at a retirement home in North Seattle. David Rose is here with more on the exclusive story airing on Washington's Most Wanted. It's a small film making a huge splash and it came out today. A documentary called Bully follows three families tackling a very real problem happening in communities all across our country. Well, we've been getting a lot of emails and calls asking what's going on with Q13 Fox and DirecTV. Well, basically, our parent company, Tribune, is in negotiations asking DirecTV to pay for retransmitting our signal. Well, the cost of therapy for children with autism can be very expensive. Insurance companies in Washington oftentimes don't cover certain treatments after a child turns seven years old. Well, John and Kirsten Griffin from Renton recently received a $24,000 bill in the mail saying their child's treatment was no longer going to be covered. Well, a judge ruled that the exclusion of coverage is a violation of the state's Mental Health Parity Act. It's a decision that could have huge implications all across our state. This decision is... The 2012 College Basketball Invitational is in the books tonight. Did the Cougars finish strong? And former Cougs quarterback Ryan Leaf, he's in the spotlight again, but not for the right reasons. Aaron Mayoski has the details coming right up.